Stop and listen, gentlemen, that be of freeborn blood. I'll tell you of a good young man, his name was Robin Hood. Robin was a proud outlaw while he walked on the ground. So courteous an outlaw as he was never to be found. Robin stood in Barnsdale and leaned against a tree. And by him stood there little John, a good young man was he. And also did good Scarlock and much the miller's son. Every inch of his body was worthy of a man. Then me spake him, little John, all unto Robin Hood. Master, if you would dine, sir, it would do you much good. Then me spake him, good Robin, to dine have I no lust, until I have some bold baron, or else some unknown guest. Until I have some bold baron that can pay for the best, or some knight, or else a squire that dwells here in the west. Good manners then had Robin Hood in that land where they were. Every day ere he would dine, three masses would he hear. The one in worship of the Father, another of the Holy Ghost. The third was for our dear lady that he did love the most. Robin loved our dear lady for fear of deadly sin. He'd never harm a company that any woman was in. Master then said, Little John, if we our board shall spread, tell us whither we shall go and what life we shall lead. Where we shall take, where we shall leave, where we shall stay behind, where we shall rob, where we shall sleep, where we shall beat and bind. We'll not use force, said Robin Hood, we shall do well enough, but see you do no farmer harm that tilleth with his plough. Nor harm ye any good yo man that by green thicket go, nor any knight or any squire that would be a good fellow. These bishops and these archbishops ye shall them beat and bind, the high sheriff of Nottingham, hold him in your mind. This word will hold, said little John, we'll learn this lesson sweet. The day is late, God send a guest that we may sit and eat. Take your good bow, said Robin Hood, and let much go with thee, and so shall William Scarlock, and no man stay with me. And I'll walk up to the Salis, and so to Watling Street, and I'll wait there for some unknown guest that you may chance to meet. Be he earl or any baron, abbot or any knight, bring him here to lodge with me, he'll dine with us tonight. They went up to the sailors, these young men all three. They look at east, they look at west, but they could no man see. But as they looked into Barnsdale down the darkest street, there came a knight a riding, full soon they would him meet. All dreary was his countenance, little was his pride. His one foot in the stirrup stood, the other hung beside. His hood hung over his eyes too, his clothes in poor array. A sorrier man than this man was, never rode on summer day. Little John was full courteous and got down on his knee. Welcome be ye, gentle knight, welcome are ye to me. Welcome be thou to Greenwood, gracious knight and free. My master fasting waits for you, sir, all these hours three. Who is thy master, said the knight? John said, Robin Hood. He is a good man, said the knight, of him I've heard much good. I grant, he said, with you I'll go, my brethren, all together, though I had planned to dine today at Blythe or at Doncaster. Forth then went this gentle knight, with careful cheer he'd ride. The tears out of his eyes did run and fell down by his side. They brought him to the cottage door, when Robin him did see, for courteously took off his hood and got down on his knee. Welcome, Sir Knight, said Robin Hood, welcome art thou to me. I have waited for you fasting, sir, all these hours three. 
then answered the gentle knight with words both fair and free, God thee save, good Robin Hood, my merry company. They washed together and wiped their hands and sat down to their dinner. Bread and wine they'd right enough and organs of the deer. Swans and pheasants they had full good and fowls the river bed. They didn't leave out any bird that ever on briar was bred. Eat well, Sir Knight, said Robin Hood. I thank you, sir, said he. Such a dinner I have not had in all these long weeks three. If I come here again, Robin, here by this country, as good a dinner I'll make for thee as thou hast made for me. Thank you, knight, said Robin Hood, dinner I sometimes have. I was never so greedy by dear God my dinner for to crave. But pay before you go, said Robin, I think it only right. It was never the custom by dear God for a yeoman to pay for a knight. I have nothing in my coffers that I may offer for shame. Little John go look, says Robin, if not he'll bear no blame. Tell me the truth, said Robin Hood, so God have mercy on thee. I only have ten shillings, sir, so God have mercy on me. If thou hast no more, said Robin Hood, I will not take one penny. And if thou hast need of any more, more shall I lend to thee. Go now forth, little John, and tell the truth to me. If there be but ten shillings, not a penny shall I see. Little John spread out his mantle full fair upon the ground, and there he found in the knight's coffer nothing but half a pound. The little John let it lie full still and went to his master beloved. What tidings, John, said Robin Hood, so the knight is true enough. Best wine, our glasses fill, the good night shall begin. Much wonder as it seems to me, thy clothing is so thin. Tell me one word, says Robin Hood, and counsel shall it be. I think you were made a knight by force, or else by yeomanry. Or else you've been a poor farmer, and lived with strokes and strife. A lecher or a usurer, with wrong you've led your life. I'm none of those, said the knight, by God that made us me. A hundred winters here before my ancestors' knights would be. But oft it has befallen, sir, a man may be disgraced, unless God up in heaven above may yet amend his state. Within these two years, Robin, he said, my neighbours know it well. Four hundred pounds of good money, I spent it all myself. Now I have no goods, said the knight, but my children and my wife. God has shaped such an end, till he may amend my life. In what manner, said Robin Hood, have you lost your riches? For my great folly, he said, and for my kindness. I had a son, forsooth, Robin, that should have been my heir. When he was twenty winters old, in field he joust full fair. He slew a knight of Lancaster and a squire bold, so to save him in his plight my goods I pledged and sold. And all my lands I mortgaged, sir, until a certain day, to a rich abbot hereabouts of St. Mary's Abbey. What is the sum, said Robin Hood, how much do you owe? Sir, he said, four hundred pounds, the abbot told me so. And if you lose your land, said Robin, what will happen to thee? I'll hastily set out, he said, over the salty sea. And see where Christ once lived and died on the Mount of Calvary. Farewell, friend, and have a good day, it may no better be. Tears fell out of his two eyes, he would have gone his way. Farewell, friend, and have a good day, I have no more to pay. Where are your friends, said Robin Hood, sir, none of them will be no. Well, I was rich enough at home, great boasts then would they blow. And now they run away from me like beasts all in a row. They take no more heed of me than in me they didn't know. For sorrow then wept little John, Scarlock and much together. Pour the best wine, said Robin Hood, for here is a poor fellow. Hast thou any friend, said Robin, thy guarantor might be? I have none, then said the knight, but God that died on a tree.
Forget your jokes, said Robin Hood, guarantor that is none. Do you think I can borrow it from God or Peter, Paul or John? Nay, by him that did make me and shaped both sun and moon, find me a better guarantor or money get thou none. I have no other, said the knight, the truth it is to say, unless it be our dear lady, never fail me to this day. My dear worthy God, said Robin, to search all England o'er, I never found for my money a better guarantor. Come now forward, little John, and go to my treasury, and bring me four hundred pounds, well counted it must be. Forward then went little John, and Scarlock went before, he counted out four hundred pounds by eighteen and two score. Is this well done, said little much, John said, what grieveth thee? It's arms to help a gentle knight that fell into poverty. Master then said little John, his clothing is full thin, you must give the knight a livery to clothe his body in. For you have scarlet and green, master, and many a rich array, there is no merchant in merry England so rich, I dare well say. Take him three yards of every colour and measure it accurately, little John took no other measure but by his bow tree. At every handful that he met, he counted a foot times three. What devil a draper said little much, dost thou think to be? Scarlock stood full still and laughed and said, By God Almighty, John may give him good measure, for it costs him but lightly. Master then said little John to gentle Robin Hood, You must give the knight a horse to carry home these goods. Give to him a great courser and a saddle new. He is our lady's messenger, God grant that he be true. And a good palfrey said little much to maintain him in his right. And a pair of boots said Scarlock too, for he is a gentle knight. What shall you give him, little John, sir, a pair of gilt spurs set? To pray for all this company and bring him out of debt. When shall my day be, said the knight, sir, what shall thy will be? Twelve months from this day, said Robin, under this greenwood tree. It would be great shame, said Robin, a knight alone to ride, without squire, yeoman, or page walking by his side. I'll lend thee, little John, my man, he'll be thy knave indeed. In a yeoman stead he may thee stand, if ever ye have great need. Is the knight gone on his way? This came he thought full good. When he looked on Barn's tail, he blessed Robin Hood. And when he thought on Barn's tail, on Scarlock, Much, and John, he blessed them for the best company he'd ever come upon. Then spoke up that gentle knight to little John, did say, Tomorrow I must go to Yorktown to St. Mary's Abbey. And to the abbot of that place four hundred pounds deliver. If I'm not there upon this night, my land is lost forever. The abbot said to his convent, there he stood on his ground. Twelve months ago a knight came here and borrowed four hundred pounds. He borrowed full four hundred pound against all his land free. Unless he comes this very day, disinherited shall he be. It is still early, said the prior, the day's not yet far gone. I'd rather pay a hundred pounds and lie down and long. The night is far beyond the sea, in England is his right, and suffers cold and hunger, and full many a sorry night. It would be a great pity, said the prior, to have his land this way. If your conscience be so light, you'll do him wrong today. You're ever in my beard, said the abbot, by God and Saint Richard. With that came in a fat-headed monk, he was the high steward. He is dead or hanged, said the monk, by God that bought me dear. And in this place we'll have to spend four hundred pounds a year. The 
Appertan, the High Steward, started forth full bold. The High Justice of England, then the Abbot did behold. The High Justice and many more had taken to their hand all the knights' debts for themselves to have that good knight's land. They deemed the knight was wondrous poor, the abbot and his men. Unless he comes this very day, he shall lose everything. He'll not come yet, the Justice said, I dare well undertake. But in sorrowful time for them all, the knight came to the gate. Then spake that gentle knight to all his men, said he, Now put on your simple clothes that you've brought from the sea. They put on their simple clothes, they came to the gates anon. The porter, he was ready himself, and welcomed them every one. Welcome, sir knight, said the porter, my lord, at dinner is he, And so is many a gentleman, all for the love of thee. The porter swore a full great oath by God that did make me. I swear these are the best bred horses that ever I yet did see. Lead them to the stable, he said, that rested they may be. They'll not go in there, said the knight, by God that died on a tree. The lords were sitting down to eat inside that abbot's hall. The knight went forth and kneeled down and saluted great and small. Greeting, Sir Abbot, said the knight, I've come to hold my day. The first word that the abbot spoke was, Have you brought my pay? Not one penny, said the knight, by God that did make me. You are a shrewd debtor, said the abbot, Sir Justice, drink to me. Why are you here, the abbot said, if you didn't bring your pay? Before the Lord, then said the knight, to pray for a longer day. Day is broke, the justice said, you can't pay what you owe. Now, good Sir Justice, be my friend and defend me from the foe. I hold with the abbot, the justice said, he gave me clothes and fee. Now, good Sir Sheriff, be my friend. No, by God, said he. Now, good Sir Abbot, be my friend for your courtesy. Please hold my lands in thy hands till I have paid the fee. And I will be your true servant and serve you faithfully Until you have four hundred pounds of money good and free The abbot swore a full great oath by God that died on a tree Get you lands wherever you may for you'll get none from me My worthy God then said the knight that all this world has wrought Unless I have my land again full dear it shall be bought God that was of a maiden Born, grant that we succeed, for it is good to help a friend before a man has need. The abbot loathly on him looked, and villain did him call. Out, he said, out, you false knight, go quickly from my hall. You lie, then said the gentle knight, abbot, in your hall. False knight I never was, by God that made us all. Up then stood that gentle knight, to the abbot said he, To suffer a knight to kneel so long, you show no courtesy. In jousts and in the tournament, full fair I've always been, And put myself as thick in the fight as any I've ever seen. How much will he give the justice said for the knight to make a release, Or else I dare safely swear you'll never hold your land in peace. A hundred pounds, said the abbot, the justice said, give him two. No, my God, said the knight, you will not get it so. Though you give me a thousand more, yet were you never the nearer, you shall never be my heir, abbot, justice, nor friar. He started for the sideboard then to a table round, and there he shook out of a bag exactly four hundred pounds. Here is your gold, Sir Abbot, he said, which you did lend to me. Had you been courteous at my coming, rewarded you would be. The abbot sat still and ate no more for all his royal fare. He cast his head on his shoulders and fast began to stare. Give me my gold back, said the abbot, no, Sir Justice, that I gave thee. Not a penny, said the justice, by God that died on a tree. Sir Abbot and you men of law, now I have held my day, now I shall have my land again for all that you can say. The knight started out of the door, gone was all his care, and he put his good clothing on, the others he left there. 
happy went forth singing merrily all men have told in tale his lady met him at the gate at home in Bellisdale Welcome, my lord, said his lady, have you lost all your goods? Be merry, madam, said the knight, and pray for Robin Hood. That ever his soul may be in bliss, he's helped me out of debt. Had it not been for his kindness, beggars we had been set. The abbot and I are settled now, I've given him his pay. The good yeoman lent it to me as I came by the way. The knight dwelled happily at home, truly for to say, till he had got four hundred pound already for to pay. He bought himself a hundred bows, the strings were fitted right, a hundred sheaths of arrows gold, the heads burnished full bright. And every arrow, one ell long, with peacock feathers bright, engraved all with white silver, it was a seemly sight. He got himself a hundred men well harnessed in good stead, and dressed himself in that same suit, all clothed in white and red. He bore a light lance in his hand, and one man took his goods. He rode on with a lively song into the Barnsdale woods. At last he came unto a bridge, and there delayed was he, for wrestling were the best young men of all the West Country. A full fair game was there set up, a white bull was the prize, a great courser with saddle and bridle, with gold burnished full bright, a pair of gloves, a red gold ring, a wine jug by my fay, the man that bore himself the best, the prize should bear away. There was a yeoman in that place, and the worthiest one was he, but being far from home and friends, slain was he sure to be. The knight had pity on this yeoman in the place where he stood. He said that yeoman should have no harm for love of Robin Hood. The knight pressed forward to the place, a hundred followed him free, with bows bent and arrows sharp to break up that company. They shouldered all and made him room to see what he would say. He took the yeoman by the hand, the prize was his that day. He gave him five marks for his win, there it lay on the ground, and bad wine cask to be tapped for all to drink who would. Thus long tarried this gentle knight until that play was done, so long waited Robin fasting three hours after the moon. Attend and listen, gentlemen, all that now be here, of little John the knight's own man, good mirth ye shall hear. It was upon a merry day that young men would go shoot, little John he fetched his bow and said he would go too. Three times little John shot about, each time he slit the wood, the proud sheriff of Nottingham beside the target stood. The sheriff swore a full great oath by him that died on a tree. This man is the best archer that ever I did see. Tell me now, my bold young man, by what name are you known? In what country were you born, and where now is your home? In Alderness, sir, I was born, that's where I still live. And when I am at home, good sir, men call me Reynold Greenleaf. Tell me then, red old green leaf, would you come dwell with me? And every year I'll give to you twenty marks for your fee. I have a master, said little John, a courteous knight is he. If you can get leave of him, the better may it be. The sheriff did get little John for twelve months from the night, and right away he gave to him a good strong horse to ride. Now little John is the sheriff's man, bless us all, dear God, but little John he always thought to pay him his reward. Now God help me, said little John, by my true loyalty, I'll be the worst servant to him that ever yet had he. It fell upon a Wednesday, the sheriff had hunting gone, and little John lay in his bed and was forgotten at home. Therefore he was fasting till it was past twelve noon. Good steward, sir, I pray to thee, give me my dinner soon. It is too long, said little John, fasting thus to be. Therefore I pray thee, sir steward, my dinner give to me. You will never eat nor drink till my lord has come to town. I make my vow to God, said John, I'd sooner crack your crown. 
The butler was not courteous, he stood there on the floor. He started for the kitchen store and then shut fast the door. John gave the butler such a tap, his back was broken too. Though he lived a hundred years, worse pain he never knew. Then John kicked the door with his foot, it opened well and fine, and there he made great liberty, both of ale and wine. Since you won't dine, said little John, I shall give you to drink, and though you live a hundred years on little John, you'll think. Little John ate and little John drank as much as he could hold. The sheriff had in his kitchen a cook, a stout man and a bold. I make my vow to God, said the cook, you are a crafty swine, to come and live in any house, and ask like this to die. And there he gave to little John good strokes two or three. I make my vow to God, said John, those strokes were fine for me. You are a bold and hardy man, so it seems to me, and before I leave this place, better tested you shall be. John drew a full good sword, the cook took another in hand. They did not have a thought to flee, but stiffly more to stand. There they fought to get a sword two miles away and more. Neither one could harm the other the remainder of an hour. I vow to God, said little John, by my true loyalty, you are one of the best swordsmen that I ever yet did see. If you can shoot a bow as well, to the greenwood come with me, and your clothing two times every year completely changed shall be. And every year from Robin Hood, twenty marks for your fee, put up thy sword, then said the cook, and fellows we will be. Then he fed to little John the organs of the dough, good white bread and full good wine, they ate and drank there too. And when they had drunk their fill, they pledged fidelity that they both on that very night with Robin Hood would be. They went to the treasury house as fast as they could run. The locks that were of full good steel, they broke them every one. They took away the silverware and all that they could get. Dishes, plates and cups and spoons, nothing did they forget. They also took the good gold coin, three hundred pounds and more, and then went straight to Robin Hood, under the greenwood hall. God save thee, my dear master, and Christ thee save and see, and then said Robin to little John, welcome you might be. And also that fair yeoman thou bringest here with thee, what tidings from Nottingham now little John tell thee. The proud sheriff does greet you well and send you here by me, his cook and all his silverware, three hundred pounds and three. I vow to God, said Robin Hood, and to the Trinity, it was never by his good will these goods have come to me. Little John there him be thought of a wily plan indeed, five miles into the forest he ran and saw his plan succeed. There he met the proud sheriff, hunting with hounds and horn. Little John was courteous and knelt him down before. God save thee, my dear master, and Christ thee save and see. Reynold Greenleaf, said the sheriff, where now could you be? I have been in this forest, a fair sight did I see. It was one of the fairest sights that ever appeared to me. Yonder I saw a right fair heart, his colour is of green. Seven score of deer in a herd were with him to be seen. Their antlers are so sharp, master, sixty or more, it's plain. I did not dare to shoot at them, for fear I might be slain. I vow to God, the sheriff said, that sight I fain would see. Hurry then, my master dear, right now, and come with me. The sheriff rode, and little John on foot he was full smart, and when they came to Robin Hood, sir, here is the master heart. Still then stood the proud sheriff, a sorry man was he. Woe is your worth, Reynold Greenleaf, you have betrayed now me. I vow to God, said little John, master, you are to blame. I was kept from my dinner when I was at your home. Were his supper set, served on a silver plate, where the sheriff saw his silverware, for sorrow he could not eat. 
make good cheer, said Robin, for the sheriff for charity, and for the love of little John, thy life I grant to thee. When they had all eaten, well, the day was almost gone, Robin commanded little John to take off his hose and shoes. His tunic, his many-coloured coat that was furred well and fine, and gave to him a green mantle to wrap his body in. Robin commanded his bold young men under the greenwood tree that they should sleep in that same suit so the sheriff could them see. All night lay the proud sheriff in his breeches and his shirt. No wonder it was in that greenwood that his sides began to hurt. Make good cheer, said Robin Hood, sheriff for charity. This is how we all must live under the greenwood tree. This is a harder way to live than any hermit or frere, for all the gold in merry England I would not long dwell here. For this twelve months, said Robin Hood, you shall dwell here with me. I shall teach thee, proud sheriff, an outlaw for to be. If I be here another night, Robin, I thee pray, smite off my head tomorrow instead, I'll forgive it thee. Let me go, then said the sheriff, for holy charity, and I will be the best friend that ever yet had ye. Swear me an oath, said Robin Hood, here on my bright brand, you will never plot to do me harm by water nor by land. And if you find any of my men by night or else by day, upon your oath then shalt thou swear to help them all you may. Now has the sheriff sworn his oath and to his home has gone. He was as full of the green wood as a rock pile is of stone. The sheriff sat in Nottingham. He was glad that he was gone. And Robin and his merry men went to the woods and on. Let's go eat, said little John. Robin Hood said nay. I fear our lady's wrath with me, for she sent me not my pay. Have no doubt, master, said little John, the sun's not yet at rest. For I dare say and safely swear the night is of the best. Take your bow in your hand, said Robin, let much go with thee. And William Scarlock shall also go, and no man stay with me. And walk up to the sailors and down to Watling Street And wait there for some unknown guest that you may chance to meet Whether he be a messenger or a good storyteller He shall have some of my goods if he's a poor and hungry fellow Forth then started little John, half in anger and woe And girt him with a full good sword and a mantle of green to go they went up to the sailors, these yo men all three. They looked east, they looked west, no man might they see. But as they looked in Barnsdale alongside the highway, they were aware of two black monks, each on a good palfrey. Then bespake him little John, to much began to say, I dare lay my life on it, these monks have brought our pay. Make glad cheer, said little John, prepare your bows of you, and see that your hearts are firm and sure, your strings trusty and true. The monk has two and fifty men, and seven pack horses strong. I vow no bishop in this land so royally rides along. Brethren, said little John, we are no more than three, but unless we bring them back to dine, our master we dare not see. Bend your bows, said little John, make all yon crowd to stand. The foremost monk, his life and death, are closed within my hand. Stay, churlish monk, said little John, go no further than you stand. If you do, by worthy God, your death is in my hand. An evil fate be on your head, right under your hat band. For you have made our master wroth, he's been fasting so long. Who is your master, said the monk. Little John said, Robin Hood. He is a strong thief, said the monk. Of him I've heard no good. You're lying, then, said Little John. And for that lie you'll rue. He is a yeoman of the forest, and to dine is inviting you. Much was ready with an arrow. He turned the monk around, held the arrow against his breast, and got him to the ground. 
of fifty-two strong young yeomen there remained not one, save a little page and a groom to lead the horse with John. They brought the monk to the cottage door, with or without his leave, to make him speak with Robin Hood, with ill will, I believe. Robin then took down his hood, when the monk saw he, the monk was not so courteous, his hood then let he be. He is a churl, master by God, then said little John, do not use force, said Robin Hood, for courtesy knows he none. How many men, said Robin Hood, did this monk have now, John? Fifty-two when we first met, but many of them are gone. Blow the horn, said Robin Hood, so fellowship we may know. Seven score of bold yeomen came running in a row. And each one had a good mantle of striped cloth and red. They all came to good Robin Hood to hear the words he said. They bade the monk to wash his hands and sit him down to dine. Robin Hood and Little John both served him bread and wine. Eat your fill, said Robin Hood. I thank you, sir, said he. Tell us where's your abbey when you're at home, and who your patron saint can be. St Mary's Abbey, said the monk, though I be simple here. In what office, said Robin Hood, sir, the high cellar? In that case, then, said Robin Hood, I have to welcome thee. Pour the best wine, said Robin Hood, this monk shall drink to me. But I marvel greatly, said Robin Hood, all of this long day. I fear Our Lady is wroth with me, she's not sent me my pay. Have no doubt, Master, said Little John, you have no need, I say. This monk has brought it, I dare swear, for he's of her abbey. She was a guarantor, said Robin, between the knight and me, of a little money that I lent him under the greenwood tree. If you have that silver brought, I pray thee, let me see, and I will help you any time if you have need of me. The monkey swore a full great oath with a sorry cheer of the borrowing you'd tell to me I did never hear. I vow to God, said Robin Hood, monk, you are to blame, for God is held a righteous man, and so is his dame. You told me with your own tongue, you may not say nay, how you are her servant, sir, and serve her every day. And you've been made her messenger, my money for to pay, therefore I thank you all the more, you've come here on your day. What's in your coffers, said Robin Hood, the truth now tell to me. Sir, he said, just twenty marks, the truth I tell to thee. If there be no more, said Robin Hood, I'll not touch one penny, and if you need of any more, sir, more shall I lend thee. But if I find more, said Robin Hood, indeed it shall be gone, for of thy spending silver, monk, I will leave thee none. Go thee forth now, little John, and tell the truth to me, if there be no more than twenty marks, no penny will I see. Little John spread his mantle down as he had done before, and he counted from the monk's coffer eight hundred pounds and more. Little John let it lie full still and went to his master to say, Sir, the monk is true enough, our lady has doubled your pay. I vow to God, said Robin Hood, monk, I told you so, our lady is the truest woman that I did ever know. By worthy God, said Robin Hood, to search all England through, yet found I never for my pay a better guarantor than you. Pour the best wine and let him drink, and thank our lady fair, if she ever has need of Robin Hood, a friend she will find there. And if she needs any more silver, come thou again to me, and by this token she sent me, she'll have it times three. The monk was going to London town, there to hold great court, the knight that rode so high on horse to bring him underfoot. Where do you go, said Robin Hood, certain manners before long, to reckon with our bailiffs there, for they have done much wrong. Come thee forth now, little John, and listen to my tale, a better yeoman I know none to search through a monk's mail. How much is in that other coffer, the truth we need to see? By Our Lady, said the monk, that is no courtesy. To ask a man to dinner, and then him beat and bind, it is our way, said Robin Hood, to leave not much behind. 
the monk took to his horse with spur, no longer would he stay. Ask us for a drink, said Robin, before you ride away. Nay, for God, then said the monk, I'm sorry I came so near. A cheaper meal I might have had at Blythe or Doncaster. Greet your abbot well, said Robin and your prior too, I pray. And ask them, send me such a monk to dinner every day. Now we'll let that monk be still and speak about that night, how he came to hold his day while it was still light. He went straight to Barnsdale under the greenwood tree, and he found there Robin Hood and his merry company. The knight lit down off his good horse when Robin he could see, then courteously took down his hood and got down on his knee. God save you, Robin Hood, he said, and all this company. Welcome be thou, gentle knight, right welcome here to me. Then bespake him, Robin Hood, to that knight so free. What need drove you to this green wood, I pray, sir, knight, tell me. Welcome, knight, but why so long to join our merry band? For the abbot and the high justice would have had my land. Hast thou thy land again, said Robin, the truth now tell to me. Yes, for God, then said the knight, thanks be to God and thee. But do not worry, said the knight, that I have been so long, for as I came to this green wood, there I did tarry long. For as I passed by Winter's Bridge, a wrestling match I saw, and there I helped a poor young man who was mistreated sore. Nay, for God, said Robin Hood, Sir Knight, my thanks to thee. The man that helps a good yeoman, his friend, then will I be. Have this four hundred pounds, good Robin, the which ye lent to me. And here is also twenty marks for all your courtesy. Nay, for God, said Robin Hood, just put it all away. For our lady by her cellar has sent to me my pay. And if I took the money twice, a shameful thing would be. But truly, truly, gentle knight, most welcome art thou to me. When Robin Hood had told his tale, he laughed and had good cheer. By my faith, then said the knight, your money is ready here. Spend it well, said Robin Hood, thou gentle knight so free. And welcome be thou gentle knight under my greenwood tree. But what are all these bows, said Robin, and these arrows feathered free? By God above, then said the knight, a poor present for thee. Please come forth now, little John, go to my treasury, and bring me that four hundred pounds the monk overpaid to me. Now take these four hundred pounds, thou gentle knight and true, and buy a horse and harness good, and gild your spurs anew. And if you need any spending money, come to Robin Hood, and by my truth you shall not lack while I have any good. Spend well your four hundred pounds which I have given thee, and make yourself no more so bare, take this advice from me. Thus good Robin helped the knight out of all his care. God that sits in heaven high, Grant us well to fare. Now the knight has taken his leave and continued on his way. Robin Hood and his merry men still dwell there many a day. Attend and listen, gentlemen, and hearken to what I say. How the proud sheriff of Nottingham announced a day of play. That all the best archers of the north should come upon that day, And he that shoots the very best the prize should bear away. He that shoots the very best the furthest and most fair, And a pair of targets fine in the greenwood there. A right good arrow he shall have, the shaft of silver white, The head and feathers of rich red gold, in England there's none like. Then good Robin heard of this under his greenwood tree. Get ready now, ye bold young men, that shooting I will see. Hurry up, my merry men, ye shall go with me, and I will test the sheriff's faith and see if true he be. When they had all bent their bows and their arrows feathered free, seven score of bold young men stood by Robin's knee. 
when they came to Nottingham, the targets were fair and long. Many was the archer bold who shot with his bow strong. Only six will shoot with me, the others watch my back, and stand nearby with good bows bent in case I am attacked. The fourth outlaw then bent his bow, and that was Robin Hood. The proud sheriff was looking on, who by the target stood. Robin shot an arrow thrice, and each time slit the wand, and so did good Gilbert as well, he of the lily-white hand. Little John and good Scarlock were archers good and free, Little Much and good Reynold the worst would never be. When they had shot all about these archers fair and good, Every time the best of them in truth was Robin Hood. As he was the worthiest, he was given the good arrow, He took the prize so courteously and would to the greenwood go. They cried out on Robin Hood, great horns began to blow. Woe to you trees, and Robin said, full evil are you to know. And woe to you, you proud sheriff, thus to greet your guest. This is not what you promised me in yonder wild forest. But had I thee in my green wood, under my green wood tree, you would leave me a better pledge than your true loyalty. Full many a bow was quickly bent, and arrows they let glide. Many a tunic there was rent, and wounded many a side. The outlaw's arrows flew so fast, no man would wish to stay. And the proud sheriff's many men hastily fled away. Robin saw the ambush coming, in the green wood he would be. Many an arrow there was shot among that company. Little John was hurt full sore with an arrow in his knee, That he could neither walk nor ride, a great pity to see. Master then said, Little John, if ever you loved me, And for love of that very lord that died upon a tree, And my service to reward that I have well served thee, Let never the proud sheriff alive this way find me. But please take out thy trusty sword, and then cut off my head, And give me wounds both deep and wide, to make sure I am dead. I would not wish, said Robin Hood, John, to have you die, For all the gold in England, though here in a row it lie. God forbid, said little Munch, that died upon a tree, That you should ever, little John, depart our company. Up he took him on his back and bore him for a mile. Many a time he laid him down and shot another while. Then there was a fair castle a little within the wood. Double ditched it was about and walled by the Lord. And there dwelled that gentle knight, Sir Richard at the Lee, that Robin Hood had lent his goods under the greenwood tree. So he took good Robin in and all his company. Welcome art thou, Robin Hood, you're welcome here to me. And much thanks for your comfort and for your courtesy, And for your great kindness unto me under the greenwood tree. I love no man in all this world so much as I do thee, For all the proud Sheriff of Nottingham, right here you shall be. Shut the gates and draw the bridge and let no man come in, And arm you well and make you ready and to the walls you win. For one thing, Robin, I promise you, I swear by Saint Quentin, For twelve days you will dwell with me to sup and drink and dine. Boards were laid and cloths were spread full readily and straight, Robin Hood and his merry men have all sat down to eat. And listen, gentlemen, and hearken to your song How the proud Sheriff of Nottingham And men of armies strong Came quickly to the High Sheriff The country up to rout And they attacked the Knight's Castle The high walls all about The proud Sheriff then loudly cried And said, Thou traitor Knight You're keeping the King's enemy here Against the laws and right so the deed you accuse me of, I did it, you are right, By all the lands that I do own, as I am a loyal knight. Go forth, sirs, go on your way, and do no more to me, Until you know our good king's will, and what he'll say to thee. 
the sheriff had his answer thus without any losing. Forth he went to London town, all for to tell our king. There he told him of that night, and also Robin Hood, and also of the bold archers that were so noble and good. He vows that he has done all this to maintain the outlaw band. He would be lord and set you at naught in all the northern land. I'll be at Nottingham, said our king, within the next fortnight, and I will take this Robin Hood, and so I will that night. Go home now, thou sheriff proud, and do as I bid thee, and call enough good archers in from all the wide country. The sheriff has his leave taken, and he went on his way. Robin Hood to the Greenwood went upon a certain day. And little John was healed of the arrow that was shot in his knee, and he went straight to Robin Hood under the greenwood tree. Robin Hood walked in the forest under the leaves so green, the proud sheriff of Nottingham was suffering in great teen. The sheriff failed with Robin Hood, he could not have his prey, so he waited for this gentle knight both by night and day. He waited for this gentle knight, Sir Richard at the Lee, as he went hawking by the river and let his hawks fly free. There he took this gentle knight with his army band and led him back to Nottingham, bound both foot and hand. The sheriff swore a full great oath by him that died on wood. Rather than a hundred pounds, he wanted Robin Hood. The knight's wife then heard of this, a lady fair and free. She sat herself on a good palfrey, to Greenwood fast rode she. When she came into the forest under the greenwood tree, there she found good Robin Hood and his fair company. God save thee, good Robin Hood, and all thy company, and for our dear lady's love a boon I ask of thee. Never let my wedded lord shamefully slain to be, he is bound fast to Nottingham for the love of thee. Right away, good Robin said to that lady so free, What man has taken your lord away? The high sheriff, said she. The high sheriff and all his men, the truth as I hear say, He has not yet three short miles passed along his way. Up then started Robin Hood, like one whose mind is lost. Get you ready, merry men, by him that died on a cross. If any man forsakes this duty by him that died on a tree, shall he never in Greenwood any longer dwell with me? Soon were many good bows bent, more than seven score, hedge nor ditches spared they none that was them before. I vow to God, said Robin Hood, the sheriff I would see, and if I could take him down, settled it would be. When they came to Nottingham, they walked in the street, and the proud sheriff, truth to tell, soon they chanced to meet. Abide, proud sheriff, Robin said, abide and speak with me. Of some tidings from our king I fain would hear from thee. For seven years, by worthy God, I never went so fast on foot. I vow to God, thou proud sheriff, it is not for thy good. Robin bent a full good bow, an arrow he drove at will, so hard it hit the proud sheriff, on the ground he lay full still. And before he could rise up upon his feet to stand, Robin cut off the sheriff's head with his trusty brand. Lie you there, you proud sheriff, evil will never thrive, no man can ever trust in you while you were alive. His men drew out their bright swords that were so sharp and keen, and laid on the sheriff's men such carnage there was seen. Robin hastened to that knight and cut into his bands, and put into his hand a bow, and bade him by him stand. You must leave your horse behind and learn instead to run, and through Maya Moss and Fen to the greenwood with me come. Come with me to my greenwood without any lying, until that I have got the grace 
of Edward, our comely king. The king has come to Nottingham with knights in great array, so he could take that gentle knight and Robin if he may. He asked men of that country after Robin Hood, and after that gentle knight that was so bold and good. When they had told to him the case our king could understand, and in his hand he seized by force all that good knight's land. Then through the pass of Lancashire he went both far and near, all the way to Plumpton Park he failed to find his dear. Where our king was wont to see herds throughout the wood, he could scarcely find one deer whose horns were any good. The king was wondrous wroth at that and swore by the Trinity, I wish I had this Robin Hood with my own eyes to see. He who would cut the knight's head off and bring it here to me, he shall have the knight's vast land, Sir Richard at the Lee. I give it to him with my charter and seal it with my hand, to have and hold forevermore in old merry England. Then spoke up a fair old knight that in his faith was true, Ah, my good liege lord the king, one word I'll say to you. There is no man in this country can keep the knight's vast land, While Robin Hood can ride or go and bear a bow in hand. For he is sure to lose his head, the best ball in his hood. Give it to no man, my lord king, that ye wish any good. For six months dwelled our company king in Nottingham and near, But the whereabouts of Robin Hood he could never hear. But always went good Robin Hood by hollow and by hill, And always slew the king's dun deer and took them at his will. Then bespake a proud forester that stood by our king's knee, If you will see good Robin Hood, then you must follow me. Take five of the bravest knights that are within your care, And walk down by your abbey some monk's clothing to wear. I will be your leader now and show to you the way, and before you come to Nottingham, my head then dare I lay, that you shall meet with Robin Hood, if still alive he be, before you come to Nottingham, with your eyes him shall see. Full hastily our king was dressed, and so were his knights five, each of them in monk's clothing, and hastened thither blithe. The king was great above his cowl, a broad hat on his crown, as if he were an abbot good, they rode into the town. Stiff boots did our king have on, in truth to you I say, he rode singing to the wood, the monks all clothed in grey. His baggage and his great pack horse followed our king behind, till they came to the green wood there, a mile under the line. There they met with good Robin standing in the way, and so did many a bold archer, the truth to you I say. Robin took the king's own horse hastily by the side, and said, Sir Abbot, by your leave, a while you must abide. We be omen of this forest under the greenwood tree, we live by our king's dun deer, no other meat have we. And you have rents and churches both, and gold in great plenty. Give us some of your spending money for holy charity. Then bespake our comely king, straight away said he, I brought no more to this green wood than forty pounds with me. For I have been at Nottingham with our good king to board, And I have spent much money there on many a noble lord. And so I have but forty pounds, no more you'll find on me, But if I had a hundred pounds, I would give half to thee. Robin took the forty pounds and divided it in two, Half he gave to his merry men to do as they wished to do. Full courteously Robin did say, Sir, have this for your spending, We shall meet another day, I thank you, said our king. But well, Edward, our king greets thee, and he sends to thee his seal, 
Hill And bids thee come to Nottingham Both to meet and meal The king took out the royal shield And certainly let him see Robin showed his courtesy And got down on his knee I love no man in all the world So well as I do my king Welcome is my good lord seal And monk for thy tidings Sir Abbot, for thy tidings good, thou shalt dine today with me, for the love of my good king under my greenwood tree. Forth he led our comely king by the hand full fair, many a deer that had been slain and full repast prepared. Robin took a full great horn and loudly he did blow, seven score of bold young men came ready in a row, all kneeled down upon their knees full fair before Robin. The king said quietly to himself, and swore by St. Austin, Here is a wondrous seemly sight, we thinketh by God's pain, His men are more at his bidding than my men are at mine. Full hastily was their dinner prepared, and to it they have gone, They served our king with all their might, both Robin and Little John. Soon before the king was set, the fatted venison, The good white bread, the good red wine, and the fine ale, and the brown. Make good cheer, said Robin Hood, Abbot for charity, and for this very news you brought, blessed might thou be. Now you shall see what life we lead before your way you wend, so you may inform our king when you're together again. Up they started all in haste, their bows were bent again, the king was never so sore aghast, he thought he would be slain. Two targets were nearby set up, and it's there that they have gone. By fifty paces, said the king, the distance is too long. On either side of a rose garland they shot beneath the tree. Whoever misses the rose garland, his arrow he shall give me. And yielded up to his master, be it never so fine. I vow that I will no man spare as I drink ale or wine. And bear a buffet from my hand upon his head all bare, And all that fell in Robin's lot he hit them wondrous sore. Twice did Robin shoot about, each time he cleft the wand, And also did good Gilbert with his lily white hand. Little John and good Scarlock he would not even spare, When they missed the garland too, Robin hit them full sore. The last shot that Robin shot for all his friend's success By three fingers and maybe more the rose garland he missed Then he spake him good Gilbert to Robin he did say Master he said your arrows lost stand forth and take your pay If it be so said Robin Hood it may no better be Sir Abbot I give thee my arrow I pray thee sir hit me my order does forbid such things, Robin, by thy leave, To hit at any good yeoman, in case it makes him grieve. Strike on boldly, Robin said, I give thee total leave, And so our king with that one word folded up his sleeve. And such a blow to Robin gave, to ground he fell full near, I vow to God, said Robin Hood, thou art a stalwart friend. There is strength in thine arm, said Robin, you can shoot well too, I bet. Thus our king and Robin Hood, together then they met. Robin beheld our comely king thoughtfully in the face, And so did Richard at the Lee, and kneeled down in that place. And so did all the wild outlaws when they saw them kneel. My lord, the king of England, now I know you well. I thank thee, Robin, said our king, under your greenwood tree, For thy goodness and thy grace, all for my men and me. Yes, for God, said Robin Hood, and also God me save. I ask mercy, my lord the king, and for my men I crave. Yes, for God, then said our king, to that I will agree. If you will leave the greenwood here in all your company, and come home, sir, to my court, and there dwell with me, I make my vow to God, said Robin, indeed, so shall it be. I will come unto your court, your service for to see, and bring with me of my men seven score and three. But unless I like your service well, I'll come again full soon, and shoot again at your dun deer, as I have always done.
ebony green cloth, said the king, that you will sell to me. Yes, for God, said Robin Hood, thirty yards and three. Robin Hood then said, Our king, now I pray to thee, sell me some of that green cloth for my men and me. Yes, for God, said Robin Hood, or else I were a fool. Another day ye will be clothed, I trust against the yule. The king he then cast off his cowl, a green garment did wear, and every knight that came with him a new green robe wore there. When they were clothed in Lincoln green, they cast away their grey. Now we shall go to Nottingham, thus our king did say. They bent their bows and forth they went, shooting far and near, towards the town of Nottingham, like outlaws as they were. Our king and Robin rode together, the truth to you I say, and traded blows whenever they missed as they went their way. Many a blow did our king win of Robin Hood that day, and Robin never spared himself to give the king his pay. So help me God, then said our king, your game I've learned right here, I should not get a shot of you, though I shoot all this year. All the people of Nottingham, they stood up and beheld, they saw naught but mantles of green that covered all the field. Then each man to the other said, I fear our king is slain, Robin Hood comes to the town, there'll no man alive remain. Full hastily they began to flee, yeomen and also knaves, and old wives that could hardly move, they hopped out on their staves. The king before them laughed out loud and commanded them again. When they saw our comely king, they were full glad twas him. They ate and drank and made them glad and sang with notes of glee. Then bespake our comely king to Sir Richard at the Lee. He gave him back his land again, a good man bade him be. Robin thanked the comely king and got down on his knee. Now Robin dwelled in the good king's court but twelve months and three, and he had spent a hundred pounds and all his men's fee. In every place where Robin came, the money he laid down, both for squires and for knights would get him great renown. By the time the year was spent, he had no men but two, Little John and Good Scarlock, and all the rest shot through. Robin saw the young men shoot full fair upon a day, Alas, then said, Good Robin Hood, my wealth has gone away. Once I was an archer, good up yielding with strong hand, I was thought the best archer in all merry England. Alas, then said good Robin Hood, alas and well a day, if I dwell longer with our king, sorrow will be slain. Forth then went good Robin Hood, till he came to our king, my lord the king of England, grant me this one thing. I made a chapel in Barnsdale that seemly is to see, it is of Mary Magdalene, and there I long to be. I could never these seven nights have time to sleep a wink, nor in all these seven days neither eat nor drink. I'm longing sore for Barnsdale, I miss the green wood so, barefoot and wool clad I have vowed thither for to go. If it be so, then said our king, it may no better be, seven nights I give thee leave, no longer away from me. I thank thee, Lord, said Robin Hood, and got down on his knee, he took his leave full courteously to the green wood, then went he. When he to the green wood came on a merry morning heard the many notes so small and sweet of sweetly singing birds. It is so long, said Robin Hood, since I could last stand here, I'd like a little while to rest and shoot at the dun deer. Robin slew a full great heart, his horn then did he blow, that all the outlaws of that forest his horn they would know. And they gathered them together as fast as they could go, seven score of bold young men came ready in a row. And they all took off their hoods and got down on their knee, welcome they said our dear master under this greenwood tree. Robin dwelled in that green wood twenty years and two, for all the dread of Edward our king back there he would not go. 
yet he was beguiled indeed through a wicked woman's sin. The prioress of Kirkusley that was not of his kin. For the love of a handsome knight, Sir Roger of Doncaster, that was her own beloved one, in evil he met her. Together they would make a plan, good Robin Hood to slay, and how they might best do that deed and take his life away. Then he spake good Robin Hood in the place where that he stood, Tomorrow I must to Kirkusley to be letting off my blood. Sir Roger of Doncaster by the prioress he lay, and they betrayed good Robin Hood through their evil play. Christ that died upon the cross, have mercy on Robin Hood, for he was a good outlaw, and did poor men much good.